everyone. I'm the Vacuuminator. I'm Buster. And this week in Toku, we're going to be discussing Metropolis and Juka in a battle royale against Geats and King Oger with Reculees. But before all that, uh, Buster, how are you doing? Uh, I've been watching Ultraman. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but, but we aren't covering any new episodes because Blazer isn't out yet. No, no Blazer for you. Yeah, we get news, but not the episode. Which actually, like, speaking of, like, just, like, to just address the Zet dub, the last two episodes, they put the trailer for Zet, for Blazer at the end, which is really cool. So, yeah, it's really good marketing. Really good marketing. Is it the dub trailer? It's the original trailer. It's, like, the trailer. They gotta gotta get a dub trailer together before that starts. Oh, yeah. I just don't think they have the dub cast yet. Uh, They're just, like, still casting for the dub, or they just don't have the footage yet. Uh... I think they're still recording the Zet dub because, from what I hear, they they like mock Dent, uh, who's in the dub, said he hasn't recorded every episode yet. So that's interesting. Mm. Um, or like at the time, he probably probably they're so, since they're doing two a week, they're getting close to the end. So um, probably by the time the Zet dub ends, because the way they planned it out, it's like when the Zet dub ends, the Blazer double start. Uh, but how are you doing, Mister Vac? I have been running around town doing errands and toy hunting all day. And then I came home and I mainlined all the content for this episode in one sitting. I am not okay. I am very tired. Ah, damn. I'm so sorry. But you can help that I, not be tired. Yeah, give me power by engaging with the algorithm. Like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell. I'm banging on my desk. So get on social media, at the Modular Media on Twitter r slash modular media on reddit at modular media on tumblr and do fucking whatever else we got around here i don't know it's fucking glebor bus on borb shadow or something uh yeah i'm okay yeah are you sure no i should know yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> let's get on to the news yeah. uh, our first story this week spiral studios is making another godzilla statue it looks real pretty Next. Uh, we're getting more Godzilla plushes. This time it's it's another version of Zilla and, and, and well, not Zilla, but Godzilla. And Rodan. Rodan is here now. Look look at the chibi pterodactyl, everybody. Clap. Clap for the chibi pterodactyl. You got a funny nose. Next. Uh, okay, this might actually interest you. We're getting new Bandai movie monster uh, vinyls. This time it's Monster Zero and, and Fire Rodan. I've never heard of Monster X, apparently, but he looks really cool. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Monster X. He's he's the big bad of uh, fucking Final Wars. Oh, he looks yeah. bad ass. <laughs> yeah, he's a big old Skullzilla. Uh, that's it for Godzilla news. Sorry. Uh, S.H. SH Pigowarts, Shin Ultraman Zeton looks... Oh, fuck. I like it. <laughs> I think he just busted. <laughs> it's, it's a very... It's like... It's it's very weird for figure arts. There's you can't do like traditional figure arts stuff with this, but it yeah. is crazy accurate to the movie, and it can do all the things, and it comes with a goddamn micro scale Ultraman. Yeah, it looks very high quality. I hope the people who buy it will be happy. Yeah, I'm 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 slightly tempted, but like I can't. I I can literally do like two photos with it, so probably not. Uh. Anyways, uh, Buster, d- do you remember Ultraman Regulos? He was fine. He's getting a show. I see. It's coming out on the twenty third. You can it'll it'll be available on Ultraman Connection and the official Ultraman YouTube channel worldwide. And there's going to be a shitty Japanese dub. Yeah, they're using the Ultra Galaxy Fight in-house Japanese studio. And for the English dub, which, like, apparently the only trailer they're showing right now is for the English dub. They said the sub will also come out, so, like, hey, at least we have that. Yeah, I'm not man, watching it. The, I'm not watching the dub for this. Yeah, me neither. Uh, I've, I, but after having the Zet dub, it's so weird going back to these, like, Yeah, yeah that's jank. the thing. Like, for, for Destined Crossroads, I sat through that dub on Ultraman Connection, and I was like, this is fine. This is, this is fine. But now I've seen the light, and you can't make me go back. Yeah, like, it this just feels like a huge downgrade after we've been getting the amazing Zet dub, which, by the way, this week's episode had uh, Ult- Sean Schemmel as Ultraman Zero, and he did really good, so, oh, yeah. N- nice, nice. But, yeah, no, I I don't give a shit about Regulos. They, 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 
kind of tried to make me give a shit about him, but they they really didn't succeed during Destin Crossroads, and now I'm just he like... He was barely a character in that. He was a cameo. He was a glorified, this is the next project-like thing. Yeah, and now watching the tr- this dub trailer for his show, it just looks like dumb, cosmic, Green Lantern training bullshit. Which, hey, like, I like the character designs. I think they're good. I just hope there's a good story to tell with it. And I hope the subversion will hopefully be able to allow me to enjoy that story, you know? Yeah, uh, I'll watch it for the show, but I'm not going to go in excited. Uh, also, uh, first mission, uh, the special with all the American Ultramen is coming out on the 4th of July. Lol. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, I guess, like, the closing thoughts on Regulos for now. Uh, I, I don't know, I feel like Sakamoto and Ultraman have kind of, like, fallen out of grace for me. Not like, like, Sakamoto's Ultraman, ever since Trigger. Because he used to do great work with Ultraman in, like, act, like the episodes he directed for X and Orb and, like, Gene he had directed. But ever since he had directed Trigger and did, like, some uh, weird things in Galaxy here's, Fight, I'm just... Here's the thing about Sakamoto, because I love Sakamoto. He's my boy. He's probably my favorite tokusatsu director. But, if the man does not have a good script... His stuff's going to feel hollow because that's all he's good at is making great visuals out of a script. And you need a great script to make great visuals out of to have a good show or movie. Yeah. Like, that's the problem with Trigger and Giga S, uh, which he also had directed. Uh, mm. Anyway, uh, Blazer? Yeah, we got Blazer scans for May. Uh, they, they show us nothing new. It's just like, hey, Ultraman Blazer is a show, kids. Have you heard about it? The first image everyone's been making their profile pick on Twitter. Really? Yeah, like I've I've had two mutuals who are like, uh, they they keep liking my tweets and like sometimes it'll line up and it'll be the same picture of Blazer. So I'm like, okay. I mean, I mean that is the that is the best image of Blazer we've gotten so far. I would say I I wouldn't mind if that was like the official poster, but I know it won't be. Yeah, it's it's a good album cover to put like parents' warning on it. <laughs> it's, it's gonna it's gonna be like a wall scroll. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, we got an uh, an additional cast member for Blazer announced. They're they're starting it up, everybody. The weekly or or monthly or biweekly, I forget how it works, but they, the regular cast announcements leading up to the new show starting airing this week. Uh, Himena Tsukiyama is playing Emmy Obe. Uh, a specialist in espionage activities that involve infiltrating the targeted organization to investigate and conduct information gathering for Scarred. Uh, she's she's the femme fatale of the series. Yeah, and she's apparently a cosplayer. <laughs> they Good just, for they, her. They, they say that in the thing. Like, people have been saying, this is big Gen Z military vibes, and like, yeah, probably. <laughs> That's sure. what they're going for. <laughs> I hope uh, it's a good character. I hope it, the actress does a good job. Yeah, it also just makes me realize I love the color, the shade of blue that these like scarred fellows are wearing. It's a really good shade of blue. Yeah, it's like uh, it's not quite baby blue, but it's close. Yeah, it's like the kind. It's Twitter blue. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible! <laughs> oh my god, Scarred is owned by Elon Musk! No! Oh, oh. I didn't even realize what I was saying until I said it. Okay. I'm never gonna let that go. You've yeah. ruined Blazer. You've done it! <laughs> oh, damn! Anyway, speaking of ruining things... <laughs> uh, Blazer has a sword. It leaked. Uh, it looks like a sword. Also, Pigmon is involved somehow. Yeah. It's probably- I don't know why Pigmon's doing- oh, what Blub- what's Blub doing on the team? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, there's been other past Ultra stuff on the marketing for Blazer, but we know it's not gonna be in the show. I think anytime we see that stuff now, we just have to assume that is Sir not appearing in this film. Yeah, Sir- Pigmon, Sir not appearing in Ultraman Blazer. <laughs> he's just like hey remember me buy this thing it has nothing to do with me he's a fucking you know what he is he's an old wore out actor in a commercial legit Big Bud just be, <laughs> he even looks depressed on the leak yeah who's who's someone like that like uh, the only person my mind's going to because I don't see a lot of commercials these days because ad block supremacy um the, the, like, last commercial I saw that I think you could, like, kind of attach that to is that Daniel Craig vodka commercial, but then, but, like, also I've heard he he really wanted to do that, and he had a lot of fun making that, because he made it with, uh, uh, for Ragnarok Man. 
Black Dawn Watiti? Yes. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> Tamashi Nations is having a world tour. Uh, and they Step kicked it off. Tour, grand tour, grand <laughs> tour. <laughs> They kicked it off with an event in New York City uh, over the weekend, and they they showed a bunch of stuff, bunch of bunch of bunch of stuff we've seen before. SH Big Awards Ultraman. They had all all the anime boys there. They had Absolute Tartarus. They had Mebius. They had uh, Decker and Tiga, or no, that's Dinah. Excuse me. Uh, they had original Ultraman. They had the the the, sh- the Chibi boys, uh, and then for Common Rider, they had uh, Black Sun and Black Sun Shadow Moon. They had uh, Shin Kamen Rider on his bike, and they had uh, a weird lamppost man I've never seen before. Uh, what, what, does he have a show or something? Team Rider, what's what's going on with this? Why are you promoting this shit on Twitter? Why are you trying to tell me about a toy that's for a show I can't fucking watch? The thing is, Fize actually is one of the series that got the butchered Toku HD treatments. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I still, I still don't count it. It's still not good. Yeah, I'm it's still, not good, yeah. I'm, I'm still going to chase you to the ends of the earth, Team Rider. Yeah. Also, I find it funny how you're probably the first person I've seen to call Fize a lab post. I stole that joke from Vangelis. That's in oh that podcast God. I always talk about. Oh my god, the ancient myths, the ancient history that of the Vacuuminator. <laughs> yeah, like, I think he, he's talking about, like, Rider Summer movies from that period of Heisei are, like, pretty easy to drop into, even if you don't know the show. Like, all you have to know is this cool lamppost man transformed with a phone, and you can watch Paradise Lost. Yeah. Um, also, uh, next to the Ultraman figure arts display, uh, they had a, uh, not life-size, because that would be huge, uh, but they had a person-sized, uh, statue of figure arts original Ultraman, uh, and only D Amazing posted a photo of that, so I had to screen cap that shit and upload it to Discord for you fuckers. Mm. It's cool. It's a nice touch. It's um, very impressive. Yeah. I, I wonder what's gonna happen to it after this world tour. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Toei, put that shit up for auction. Um, what, are you gonna buy it? <laughs> I don't have that kind of money, but I know someone would. Um, wow. But, uh, okay, moving on to uh, Common Rider news, and we're starting off something kind of sad. Uh, the offer of Shin Common Rider Spirits has announced that the uh, manga will be coming to an end with Chapter 100. Alright, let's... Backstory, because we never talked about Spirits on the show. Spirits ran in 2001, uh, around when Agito was starting up, and it's basically like a ZX continuation. It has like all the show was from 1971 to ZX, which mm-hmm. basically no Black or RX. And yeah. uh, it, it's but, very... But Taki's the main character, and he gets a lot of cool stuff to do, and he's, he's basically like the Nick Fury of Common Rider in that. Or like, yeah, or like, uh, what's there, there's another word to use for it, where it's like you're the... Per- the anniversary uh, p- point of view character. Yeah, uh, I think. but he's also like from the original series, so he has that gravitas to him. Yeah, well, I, I you know, like the appeal of Taki isn't his gravitas, but more just his uh, whimsy, like just kind of his his down to earthness. So yeah, I, I still haven't read this, but I'm very excited to because I want to wait till I like, get up to ZX in my show I'm watching before reading this. I read um, a good bit of uh, Spirits back in the day, but I never got to Shin Spirits, because technically Spirits ended, and then like a, a little while later they started up Shin Spirits. But now that it's all going to be done and dusted, Seven Seas, Team Rider, Chop Chop, let's, let's, let's get that official release happening. Yeah, I think Spirits might be one of, like... Like, it's one of the most critically acclaimed Common Rider things ever, so, like, get that shit on store shelves. Get I want to see it in Barnes & Noble's next to my Kuga manga and 1971 tome. Yeah, I will, like, volumes or an omni- omnibus, either way, I will buy this shit. I think volumes, because of how many chapters, just volumes will just be much, like... Oh, yeah, an omnibus of Spirits would probably take up, like, a whole shelf. Yeah, it would just be, like, the longest book ever. <laughs> yeah, it's like we had to custom order a binding for this. It cost $2,000. Yeah. Uh, let's get into a little bit of toy news, though. Because uh, uh, Figure Eye Standard announced their next release, like, uh, a couple hours before we uh, recorded. We actually probably would have missed this if we recorded when we were supposed to. Uh, but uh, Dark Kabuto, it's happening. You, 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 the fucking the Dark Boy, and he's got his, his, uh, his masked form. I love Dark Kabuto. I'm not sure if I'm going to buy this because I don't do Figure Eye, so. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't. I definitely don't do figure eyes, and I I don't know anything about Dark Kabuto as a character, and I've always thought the suit looks kind of dumb, honestly. Well, like I can I can kind of agree on the well, armored form. The armored form doesn't really have many changes, uh, especially because he barely uses the armored form. He always goes cast off. Uh, but yeah, I, I do love the character. I love the like his five fans for reasons. Uh, so I just I genuinely love him. Uh, so I can't wait to see him. And I hope people like uh, the figure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, uh, moving you into shit, Kamen Rider spoilers incoming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a there's a there's a modern looking version of the Shin Kamen Rider suit that might be in the movie. It looks nice. I like these colors on this suit. This suit looks great in, like, every Rider 1 color scheme somehow. Yeah. I don't want to say the name because the name is going to be a huge spoiler. So we're just going to leave it that there's a new suit. Yeah. Uh, God, they're going to make, like, 20 figure arts of just this one design. They're going to wear that mold out. Yeah. Um, but, uh, okay, here's where stuff starts getting nuts. It wasn't nuts already? <laughs> well, fucking over last week, a shit ton of future, like basically the rest of the shit Bandai has planned for the next year leaked via trademarks. So okay. I'm just going to start saying names and we'll, we'll see where this all goes. DX Geet's new weapon and boost mark nine. DX laser question mark. DX question mark magnum. DX Fantasy Buckle A question mark. DX ID Core Set 02. Uh, DX Ninja Buckle and Core ID the movie. DX Buffa Demon King Buckle. DX Tycoon General Buckle. CSM Genesis Driver and Sonic Arrow. Memorial Edition Shoto Phone. DX. Yeah, DX Zero Zector. Uh, no, it's Zero Slacker. Get it right, mate. Uh, it's, it's, these are clearly misspellings. Uh, uh, CSM Pasiga Gear, Super Sentai Me, Don Brothers Zanglass Sword, and Don Murasame Ninja Arc Sword. Probably the the Memorial Editions for those. Fucking. Okay. I, 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 I'm not one to make wallet jokes, but prepare your wallets, motherfuckers. Yeah, a lot of fan favorite stuff's getting uh, released. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll be honest, among this, because I'm not currently collecting Geet stuff, uh, and I don't, I, I didn't go in on CSM Gaim. I have no reason to go in on CSM Fies. The only thing here that like is like, ooh, maybe I would want that, is the Memorial Edition Shoto phone. But honestly, I'm kind of fine with my DX, unless the Memorial Edition Shoto phone like does some crazy cool toy tech. Like if it has motion sensors to detect the the specific symbols, you have to actually draw the symbols from the show. It's not just oh you waved it around, it'll work now. That that would maybe make me go like oh I want to mess with one of those, but I don't know if I want to buy one. <laughs> Understandable. Uh, should we move on to some more Gideon? Uh, yeah, uh, we got, uh, some rumors for Geats as well. Uh, Seeker is gonna return in the future using the Fantasy Rays buckle that we just talked about from Leaks, and also Tycoon is getting a new form, uh, Tycoon Shogun form, or possibly General form. We'll see if people actually decide to translate it in their subs or not. Uh, also, the Summer Movie is going to use a new ID core and a Purple Ninja buckle, obviously what that set was referring to. Just kind of further solidifying the leaks. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see some some crazy like fucking honestly, just like hey, K was getting a, a final form, isn't that nice? Yeah, I mean, we already knew he was getting a new form, but like it's a Shogun form. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, shit. we'll we'll finally have something that can maybe rival uh, Kachidoki Gaim aesthetics wise. Yeah, and like Kachidoki Gaim was, I'd argue, the peak of Gaim. I hope mm -hmm. we get a similar peak with uh, Tycoon Shogun form. So yeah, yeah, I like Kiwami more than most people, but even I will agree Kajidoki is better. It's better just from the writing perspective, honestly. It's just like just the <laughs> actual arc writing. I, I'm one of those weirdos who judges forms based on how they're like implemented in story. So that episode where it debuts was also like the last time I was truly hype while watching Gaim. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, uh, speaking of hype, 
Yeah, we got the the Geats uh, scans for the month, uh, showing a lot of stuff that we saw in this week's episode for Buffa and Geats himself just kind of hinting at the end there. But also, uh, big spoiler, guys, uh, Kamen Rider Hakubi is going to debut next week, and it's Kawa's sister. I kind of hate this, not gonna lie. I, I'm pretty really? sure they'll write it well. Pretty sure they'll write it well, but like... She was the only non-writer supporting character besides Surumi, and I keep forgetting Surumi exists. True. Uh, and like, I'll admit, I never would have guessed her character was going to become a writer, but I'm interesting to see how it's handled. Like, to, yeah. like I would love it if it's like, she is totally just like this punished, fuck the world, I'm saving my brother type of character now. Because yeah. like, she's lost everyone in her family, and she's like, I, I have to fight to bring them all back. Oh my god, what if that's her wish, and it somehow gets granted, my whole family comes back? Ooh, interesting. Well, speaking mm. of wishes... Yeah, uh, hang on, I gotta get back to the doc real quick. Okay, uh, we, uh, we finally know what Ben and John's common writer names are, because thanks, thanks to a, uh, Geet's website thing, we found out the names of all the new writers that were in this week's episode, because we'll talk about that. Uh, Ben is common writer Lancer, and John is common writer Garon. Both are cool names. I, I hate that they already wasted Lancer, because I feel like that could have been used for a billion other writer. Just Yeah. It's, there's there's a lot of name stuff, I have to say, this week when we get to the Geats portion. But, yeah. Uh, oh, man. Uh, also, uh, Common Writer Groovy was in the episode this week, and uh, they announced who his actor was. Uh, uh, um, eat? Eat? Itoku? That's Is that... a stage name. That's a stage name that he commonly uses, and he's a suit actor. Yeah, uh, suit actor boy. He's done a lot of like, uh, like a uh, rival characters, right? Yeah, like uh, let me pull up the tweet where I uh talked about his rival characters. Uh, he's done Urotaros, uh, Common Under Waz, Common Under Blades, and Cross Z. Those are like the four big ones I uh listed on my tweet. But like, yeah, it's really cool. I've been like following like i'm not following but like i've seen his name around when i look up suit actors and i'm like yeah I, it's great to see him even get a small cameo in this week's geats yeah i always like when toei does that because they could very easily be like oh we stunt casted a celebrity and they're in one scene just to just to pop a rating but no it's like we have this actor here just just send him the wardrobe for 10 minutes yeah uh, yeah, and I like the name groovy although again much like lancer they might have wasted it <laughs> yeah uh. Also, uh, the main free actors from Geats were in a Japanese lemonade ad this week. It's cute. Uh, I don't yeah. think anyone's gonna sub it. Uh, yeah, it's the, uh, the usual, because ever this happens every year, the Otakron C ad. Although this one's a bit different editing-wise, because they play into neon streamer aesthetics, so that's really cute. Yeah, nice that they did that. Uh, but a not-so-nice thing, in my opinion. Uh, oh, Memorial yeah. Edition Gear Tillinger Master Edition got announced, or Master Version, excuse me, got announced. Uh, this is essentially the, the Memorial Edition Gear Tillinger, but now it has Kaito lines in it from Don Brothers, and it comes with the photo book from the show, which, hey, that's a nice touch, but, like... Why are you releasing an entirely separate hundred dollar toy just for this? This could have been packed into to the regular Gear Tlinger or like a Dom Brothers toy or Legit. something like that. This is this is this is like one of the most blatant examples I've seen in a while of just Bandai being a greedy capitalist. Yeah, I love Zenkaiser Black, but you ain't catching me buying this. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this this isn't even on the Oh Santa Please list. Yeah. Uh, um, but hey, on uh, on more light and fun uh, merchandising news, uh, to celebrate uh, Don Brothers vs. Zenkaiger coming out, uh, there's going to be a special themed menu item at the Super Sentai restaurant. It's it's a nice little fruity looking drink. I don't know. It's probably alcohol. Yeah, I want to I want to go to the Super Sentai restaurant, man. I want to go there and I want to go to Common Rider to Diner. I'm gonna go to yeah. Japan someday. I I I know. I swear. Well, well, all all modular media. If we do that, we're all gonna have to go together. Yeah, big modular media field trip. Modular media takes Tokyo, <laughs> coming twenty twenty to fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, uh, the Ogre Caliper Zero went up for pre-order this week. Uh, it's it's, it's seventy one hundred yen. 
uh and it's 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 gonna be uh shipping in june uh and like i said last week don't buy this just wait for the memorial edition guys also, apparently they just showed the black and black and gold repaint of King Oger. So oh, yeah. King Oger Zero. Uh yeah. it's it's there's definitely a DX happening. Yeah. Hooray. Uh hey, May scans for King Oger are in. Oh, yeah. And I think there's neat stuff in here. Give me two seconds to open them in tabs. Yeah, we have our six ranger. Oh yeah, that's that's right. The Spider Boy. We we know what he looks like now. We know. Let's just launch into a discussion of the Spider Boy because he's the main focus of the scans here. And I believe, uh, yeah, the very next thing I have on the links here is the the uh, the full announcement with the actor and everything. Um, it's not a green Spider Ranger. It's a white Spider Ranger with black accents and gold highlights it looks gaudy as fuck i hate this suit i actually hate the helmet more honestly i don't know the helmet just like looks like the a helmet tank. looks lazy the rest of it looks like the colors just clash too hard for me and mm. god damn it toa you can't go a fucking year without doing a gold six ranger somehow and yeah, these guys they got they're, they're obsessed of gold Oh, yeah. But, like, I think the thing that everyone was memeing on more is that this guy's name is Jeremy Brazer. Yeah, uh, played by Masashi Ikeda, um, yeah. who is is the most twink-ass motherfucker I've seen in Toei to co content in a while. And apparently, okay, here's the character description. He is a quote-unquote pacifist who identity is shrouded in mystery. He hates conflict and tries to remain neutral between the two warring factions. This guy's a centrist. <laughs> this guy, oh man, there needs to be a focus episode of of Rita being like, "Hey, motherfucker, sometimes you can't be impartial." Like, you have Rita impart that lesson onto him. Yeah, like, like radicalized. This, this guy got to get radicalized eventually. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, uh, he, he he has his own like self contained gimmick that is basically Ranger keys. Like, it's the same teeth system. Uh, and they're used to power up his his changer is a sword. It's 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 literally just a plastic sword with a spider on the hilt. Yeah. Um, and then he does have the bug spray weapon. It's a separate gun. Um, I think his weapons are the best part about him. I like the bug spray gun. I think the sword looks lazy. Um, That's fair. And also just like it's insane that they're reusing the Ranger Key gimmick entirely here. It's the exact same teeth system. Um, and somebody pointed out on the back of, of his collar, like right below his neck, he's got a keyhole on his suit. I'm willing to bet you unlock this motherfucker and he becomes his own mecha. Ooh, that would be actually funny. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Like... The character sounds interesting. Hopefully they write it well in the show. But I, I I, think the actor looks like a silly boy. And I think the suit looks terrible. And I think yeah. it's kind of kind of lazy of Bandai to reuse that key gimmick. But whatever. I mean, to be fair, we, we also said similar things about like how like, how, like Don Dragoku was kind of like, eh, like not really feeling it. But then he became yeah. one of our favorites throughout the show. So. Yeah. I, I love Don Dragoku as a character. I still don't like anything. I don't like his suit, and I think his his changer is fucking annoying sounding. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but uh, there is a little more King Oger news here. Uh, there's going to be uh basically a a candy toy grade set of the uh the the Shogod Souls, the the bit the the mechas encased in amber. So if you really want those, you can you can get them a little more easily now. Um. Moving on to something more interesting, though, uh, fucking rest of the toy line leaked. Uh, first the of all, rest of the toy leak, toy line for this half leaked. Yeah, uh, we know what Kakusus Castle looks like in robot mode now. It's it's a big black and gold robot with like a golden axe weapon. Uh, not not like the video game. Um, and uh, we know what a golden uh, Kuwagata Oger looks like. Uh, gaudy as fuck. I love this suit so much, man. <laughs> you fucking bitch. I knew you would. <laughs> yeah, I, it's it's just like, it's basically like, uh, it, it appeals to a lot of my favorite design tropes. Like, I know, like, gold is an overused color, but, like, and also, this has the crown helmet. This is I the like, crown helmet. 
I like gold when it's an accent color. Um, I don't like it when it when it's just like the suit just looks like it's dipped in gold. That's um, fair. I hope, here's my actual hope. I hope they pull an Arborager and this is like a fusion for. Yeah. I think that would be cool. Um, oh, I do like the weapon, though, how it's like this big mechanized looking lance that also kind of resembles a, a castle tower and the yeah. hilt has a crown. That's yeah. that's some cool toy design there. Uh, also, uh, Ultimate King Oger leaked. It's a 22 to everything in the toy line combination that looks like a big tall clusterfuck. I think this looks worse than Shinkeno. <laughs> Not the Shinkeno fi final mech. That's uh, that's fighting words to some people. I bet. Yeah, I know. yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I think like the Shin like while it's the Shinkajo final mech is like a bit weird. I think it works because it's like it's a seat and like Shogun sit on a seat. You know, it's a like a Japanese trope where it's like fighting on sitting down. You know, so, I've like, watched Samurai all the way through twice, and I've watched Shinkenger, and I never realized that until now. My dude. <sighs> I don't know what to say. I I got nothing. I got nothing to say. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, it, I'm a special it, boy. <laughs> it looks okay. It's it's good, gaudy, but like hey, you know. Mm -hmm. So like these these photos are are kind of pixelated and watermarked to high hell. So they might look better when we see them in full HD. Yeah. Speaking of looking better. Uh yeah. Uh, next month in TB Coon, uh, we're gonna get uh, the full reveal of Spider Kumomosis's uh, Robo. Uh, we're gonna get Common Rider Geats's final form, and we're going to get more details on Ultraman Blazer with the rest of the cast announced. So Yay. look forward to the end of the month, boys. Uh, and uh, hey, speaking of speaking of looking forward to things, I think it's entirely possible if Hasbro are, are smart are smart people and Netflix are persuasive people we might get more power ranger specials in the future because uh once and always apparently did pretty darn good on netflix it was in the top 10 in 22 different countries and uh in its first uh 23 or uh, in its first week it did 6.55 million hours of viewing uh now that's not unique viewing that counts like just as many times as people have watched it but keep in mind the special is about an hour long so like even if everybody watched it twice that's still kind of huge numbers for power rangers these days yeah, that's uh yeah i hope they do more specials or if they just keep putting things on netflix and people will watch them so we'll see yeah, but that is that is all the news that's fit to print. We got through that way faster than I thought we would. Buster, take us on to the new releases. Right. We're back at the Metropolis, boys, because it's Doug Edger's Metropolis Episode 2. This is who I am. I did not like this nearly as much as the first one. Oh, uh, yeah, fair. It's more, it's more of a breather. Like, uh, what did you do this... like about it? This, it's just this feels more like a first episode than, than the other one did the first one had like this fun frantic energy that kept everything flowing really nice this one is very bogged down in what are our old characters up to and how is the new character going to interact with them scenes yeah it's it's a pretty like i feel off doug edgers episode two is are very much like slower like i've been rewatching the show for videos and like a lot of the episode two and seasons they're very slow they're very much more like traditional while well, the first episodes are always frantic frantic go 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 here's a bunch of fun stuff you know like the first episode's supposed to get you hooked while episode two is supposed to understand it more mm. and like i i got a bit more feel for some of the dog engers characters here but like but no more than like what you've given me for explanations and stuff fair yeah well, then again, I'm like a big super fan. So the, the uh, only thing, the only thing that was surprising is the the fucking metal heroes looking dude who speaks in beeps and boops. I liked him a lot. Oh yeah, he's much more of a cameo character. He's much more just like a local hero they know that they just put in the show for like little gags. Uh, mm. Yeah, he he ba he's basically started appearing in high school, so it's nice to see him back. He, he's really cute, mm -hmm. and like also the idol robot's still really funny. So oh like, yeah, she's she's best girl. Yeah. I mean, there's not really many female characters in Doug Andrews to begin with. Yeah, they they literally go out of their way to, in this episode to be like, uh, Mako is is Madam not appearing in this series. Actually, no, she is appearing. She's just not appearing right now because. Oh, okay. Like, because she 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 had the opening. She's with all the other Doug Andrews in the opening. She's yeah. In it's she probably just like you could only get her actor for a few days this time, so she's going to be sprinkled for out. 
Uh, yeah, it's that, and also just they want to focus on the new character. It's always about the new boy uh, in the Doctor mm-hmm. season. And I'm guessing the one guy who powered down, uh, he's like, is he like one of the original boys? He is the first main character. Okay, so he, he's like a supporting character in all the series yeah. since? Yeah, rookie. Uh, he's, he's arguably still a main character, but like he had his main big arc in the first season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, I say this as I'm playing with uh, the vinyl of him right now. <laughs> <laughs> I will say the one bit I, I really liked in this episode besides uh, Beeps and Boops Man was uh, just the gag of the police coming in and setting up the sign while he's doing a speech. Oh, yeah, that was hilarious. Like, yeah, they're, they're just funny guys. It's just it's nice to take out. Them. I do think the uh, the long because this is like because the episodes used to be like 17, 19 minutes. But now they're like for this season they're like we're back to we're doing twenty minute episodes. And I do feel like it's kind of making it a bit of a drag. Like a, a little of- bit, yeah. Like uh, I will say specifically something I didn't like about this episode is just um, it hasn't yet, but they are doing the the um, uh, what's his name, uh, Megaru. Uh, yeah. Him him getting scared and accidentally transforming. They did that gag so much this episode that I'm like. If they keep doing it at this rate, I'm going to get tired of it by episode four. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, I think that's just for this episode, because, like, yeah, I hope... I it's a, I, I think my problem with this episode is that we didn't really establish an arc for Megaru yet, or, like, a personality outside of Coward, you know? Mm-hmm. We need we need a bit more sauce. They're hinting at the sauce, but we need them more, you know? Yeah, get cooking, fuckers. Yeah, hopefully they will. Uh, uh, Did we get any scenes of the villains? Because it's been a while since I've watched this. Uh... No, uh, it was it was just idle robot assaulting people, and, yeah. and you see the villains in the next time episode in the next time preview. So they're probably gonna pick her up next time. Yeah, and like uh, we're also gonna get the other VTuber voiced man. Uh, so that's gonna be fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, one I will say another thing I really liked about this episode: the whole sequence uh, before Beeps and Boops Man shows up with the uh, the radio local hero, who's like. Yeah. Uh, who's like accosting a woman on the street i was like oh my god he's just like me for real no he's shabber he's the part of the villain group he is yeah and he's the writer of the show oh yeah he's credited shabbery man is credited with writing dog engine oh okay see his whole thing of just like ranting about like i used to be i used to be somebody and then i fell off and now i'm tr- i'm just yelling at random people on the street to, to get a career again i was like oh my god this this guy's been watching my youtube channel <laughs> i knew you would like shabari but he's very frantic and fun uh, he's yeah. a good he's a good old boy i like yeah. him. yeah I, I hopefully you you'll watch when you see the other dog interesting since you'll love him just as much yeah all right, I think I think that's it for our, our Dog Enders discussion. Episode three is gonna get subbed. It's not subbed yet by the time we're recording this, but yeah. like the people it who could, have been subbing, it could be subbed by the time this is out, honestly. Yeah, but the people who have been subbing have been sick, so get well soon. Oh uh, yeah, get get the heal up, boyos. Yeah, and girls. Uh, okay, we got three common other things to talk about right now. Okay, so let's get ready. Here we go. Here we go. Common other Juga versus Ultica Part One. Uh. So I think I'm finally, I'm finally, I'm finally willing to, I'm finally, I'm finally going to do it. What? It's Ortica. Ah! They got me. We've been misspelling it for an entire show. The, the, the fucking, the, it's written that way in the subs we watched, which is, it's not whoever subbed Revice while we were watching it. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, it, it, like the way George pronounces it in this, I actually heard it as Ortica this time. Oh, okay. So, anyway, this is funny. This is fun. Uh, it's it's a fun little thing. It's extremely predictable, and there's there was a bit where I was like, oh, you fuckers better fix that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, uh, George is being, uh, a, I don't want to say incel, because <laughs> like, a like, like, he's a He's just an influencer. He's an yeah. influencer whose entire theme is I like Common Rider in, in like the first few minutes of this. Yeah. Because um, he goes, he vlogs his whole morning routine and he doesn't even post it online. He just sends it to Hero Me. I'm like, dude, why don't you just ask him out? Yeah, that, that's just the homosexual. <laughs> and... uh-huh. Also, like, George fucking keeps his, his real working driver next to a display of CSMs. What, what a king. Guy. 
what this guy, this guy. That's that's basically George, like my reaction to George, this guy. Yeah. It was uh, fun getting back to a little bit more of the, the characterization he had in, in his uh his cameo at the end of Saber, where where he, he was like uh fucking I'm I'm the best guy, look at me, I'm so amazing for two seconds, and then they never did anything else with that in Revice. He did. The final the final two episodes. The, the, the final two episodes he had, the Juga like episodes, remember? Well, no, that was, that, was, that was more of a rampage. That wasn't yeah. like a fun, I, I'm full yeah. of myself kind of thing. Um, That's fair, yeah. But like, it uh, was like a mix of both to me. That being said, though, man, what a trip seeing the Juga suit with his normal ass voice coming out of it. Oh, yeah, because he's usually filtered out with the voice. So. Yeah, he was, a, he was a big old growly gravelly man in the show. And here it's just regular George shouting English. Yeah. Uh, it is, yeah, like, yes! Like, he's been trying trying to make that his catch film, which is funny, because I, I like how that joke, uh, how did you feel about Rena's treatment in this special? I got real mad until I, I saw, I, I got to the end of it, and it was like, oh, this is a big misunderstanding, and they're gonna be back together by the end of this. Because, yeah. like, her characterization is on point, this is how she would react to this, but I was like, if you motherfuckers split them up post-series, I'm gonna, toy. We're gonna have problems. Yeah, that, that that would have been really good. That would have been a worse fate than the Zero One characters had. Mm. Like, but you know, here's the thing: you see little snippets of the texts, and you see the actual bit where she left. Uh, um, oh God, what's his name? Owada or something like that. Uh, and they directly reference the mystery, and I'm like. Oh, he was he was texting the lady from the mystery to check up on her and make sure she was okay. Yeah, nice continuity there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is. I wish this wasn't a part wide because it's a two parter. They should have just made it like a one like forty. It, it should have just been like a forty five minute special. Yeah, they, they need to stop doing this part shit. Like it makes it hard to judge these week to week. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, because like there's barely anything with Ortica in this. He yeah. he shows up for he shows up in the flesh for one scene, and it's just to be a menacing man. He doesn't even transform in this one. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's very obvious that all of George's lab assistants are working for him. Yeah, I don't know. It's. And I'll, I'll probably have more thoughts when we finish this. Uh, yeah. yeah. Also, I I know the dude was Misao's actor from Juoger, but I feel like I was supposed to recognize the lady and the old dude too, and I didn't. Let me go look up their act. Well, like, well, I'm gonna go look up their actor. Uh, yeah. But overall, uh, again, they need to stop doing this part show with the Tony Tokusatsu fan club specials. It's just it, getting really annoying. It was fine. Yeah, it was fine. The, the actual contents was fine, but the part shit, dude, this gotta stop, man. This gotta stop. Uh, let me look at characters. Uh, who are... Oh, apparently Haruto was mentioned. In... Yeah, because uh, that, that's why I was like, oh, are were you in Wizard or something? Because the, the, the lady assistant does the wizard pose. Oh, let me look. The guest cast... No, uh, can't... I don't know who any of these people are. Okay, yeah, I'll just I'll look that up later. Uh, yeah, they're just some they're just some fellas. Yeah. Speaking of fellas, it's crossover movie time, boys. Oh boy, this came out on the best week possible. Yeah, there's too much shit we covered this week. Okay, Kamen Rider Geats, X Revice, Movie Battle Royale featuring Ryuki. This this movie, this is like here's the thing. This movie isn't as nearly bad or as incoherent as those movies tend to get, but this is the closest I've ever felt watching a Kamen Rider movie to watching a Michael Bay Transformers movie. I was so tired by the end of this. Oh yeah, it's a big, there's a lot of stuff happening. It's basically a continuous plot of action. Like, Which, uh... I watched, like, I watched the these first three things, and I took Twitter breaks between each of them. But when I finished this, I was like, I can't just take a quick Twitter break and then go into Geats. I gotta go downstairs and, like, eat a sandwich. Oh, but don't you like the Michael Bay Transformers movies? Isn't that so good? I like them. I defend those movies. But, like, yeah, they do make you tired. And this made me tired. And, like, again, it's nowhere near as bad as those. It just gave me that feeling of, like, I just watched a movie with a lot of shit in it. I need to go lie down. Yeah. Honestly, I will admit the movie doesn't start off on the right foot because we see naked Revice kiss. 
Yeah, though I like the Austin Power censorship. That was a nice touch. Yeah, just the, they just covered their schlongs with their like uh, rider forms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the one and only time Deathstream is referenced the whole movie. Oh, real? I forgot. I thought he transformed in this movie. No, he doesn't. Uh, which was a little bit upsetting. I would have liked to have seen that. You know, th- th- they should have had a moment in this movie where he transforms and Yukami gets powers. They should have just done that. Yeah. Uh, but um, even besides that, I actually like the revised portion of the movie. Oh no, I think the movie, like for a move for a movie that's doing the the crossover like free segment structure, it does it brilliantly because it doesn't feel like free segments. It just feels like a story that starts on the revised cast and then like incorporates the Geats cast and then slowly starts incorporating the Ryuki cast. Yeah, like, I thought, like, this was going to be more segmented when the movie began, but once they head into the Geats characters, I'm like, oh, it's just, it's a flowing story. It's like, that's, it, it's an interesting way to handle it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't mean the Revice cast are more prominent than the Geats cast, which, you know. Yeah, it, on... it is basically, uh... I forget how many episodes Revice had, but it's it's episode it's it's the next it's the next episode of Revice and the then the Geats, yeah, and then the Geats characters show up, and like man, they are ultra specific about where in Geats this takes place. Yeah, I mean that's good because this is right when Buffa dies for the first time. So mm-hmm. I I'm really looking forward to the gateway to Geats on this. I really want to see like how 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 confusled it makes Boingo. Yeah, I uh, actually I want to know. We're going to be jumping all over the place with this movie. Uh, yeah. I want to know how confused you were about the Ryuki cast. It it certainly helps that I've seen Dragon Knight, because I was kind of able to guess at general characterization. Um, all right. And, like, here's the thing. My favorite part of the movie was that final scene where Shinji, like, gives Keiwa a clap on the back past torching thing. I oh, was yeah, like, I love this that. is really sweet. Okay. I'm gonna talk about the Ryuki stuff now because that it's it's a small part of the movie. It's like ten minutes of the movie. Yeah, I loved it mostly. I have an issue, and that comes with Ren's motivation. Ren, like, yeah, he's an asshole, but he doesn't want to destroy things. He just wants to like get his like lover back. Like he has yeah, a big standoff I know about him, and I just kind of guessed like, oh, he's just being he's just being an anti secret asshole to get Shinji back. Yeah, well, even then, like this, this, like the the way they play up the character, this is like before Ryuki ends, so or mm. something like that, or just it's very much the traditional Shinji Ren. Like that scene with Shinji and Ren was really good, and it really like it very much was. It didn't really try to like slot into the Ryuki storyline. It's mostly just here are the characters doing their shtick, or like let's put them. The the Shinji, I do agree. The Shinji and Tycoon scene was the best part. Uh, just Takai Kyo has a lot of great scenes in this movie, like especially when like uh, Kagero goes to yeah, ask. When you see that Shinji has, or no, I'm sorry, when you see that Kawa has a devil, and he's also a good boy. Yeah, and it's like, what are they got to play with that in the show somehow? Not like the devil part, but his motivation of like his his will is unbreakable or some shit like that, you know? Yeah. Um, and like I, I generally like this more than I thought I would, honestly. This is like it's just like it gives the revised cast nice closure, it gives them a lot of fun moments. The Geats stuff is really cool. Uh like it's just nice little I, I don't like Seeker. Uh just I know most movie writers are kind of thing, but like I don't know. Seeker oh yeah, Seeker was a total nobody. They yeah, wasted that suit. Yeah. And I'm like, if he's supposed to come back later, uh you gotta do you gotta do some uh Fixer upper, you know. Yeah, he needed to be in way more of the movie and have much more of an arc. Because as is, he is literally just an NPC boss for uh, uh, Geats and Revice to fight in the final scene. And, and by the way, sh- that final scene was so fucking ugly and filled with CGI. That's the point where I really started going like, "Oh God, this is a lot." Yeah, that's fair. I I think I can handle it because I think there's there's some cool choreography. Uh, but also just the music. I really love the uh, movie remix of the Geats theme. Though that was bliss. I need that. I'm gonna like look up the soundtrack for that because that Geats has good music, and that you put that with a movie budget. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, uh-huh. I also find it funny that like most of what Seeker does in this movie is just build a big ridiculous like uh, erector Portal set the sky. tower. Yeah, Portal of the Sky shit. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, I, I literally had a moment where I was like, oh, if that name wasn't already taken, they would have called this motherfucker Common Rider Build. Yes. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, I think it was a cute crossover movie. Like, I, it was better than I expected. It's not like the best thing ever, but it's like, it's 
good for what it is. It's the best possible version of this, minus some of the Ryuki characterization. But I, of course, I'm going to be particular about it. I'm a big Ryuki fan, so. Yeah, the, the only real problem I have is, like, there's kind of a there's kind of a subtle character assassination of Genta and Yukami, in my opinion, because, like, who in their right fucking mind would have another kid after they found out that their kids have fucking demon cells that make them a target? Who would subject another human... Who would bring another human being in the world to suffer through that bullshit? It's just more of a you issue, not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I disagree with, with the characters. That baby was fucking ugly. Yeah, I don't know. I um, hope they grow up to be a handsome person, but I, as a baby... I ugh. think you just hate babies, man. <laughs> hey, I like my nephew. Okay. Uh, what was it? There was another thing I was gonna say about this movie. Uh, give me a second. Oh yeah, neon scene. Uh, that was cute when she bugs Bunny. Uh, uh, oh to, yeah, like, and like finding out that uh, the neon is a fan of Happy Spa, and 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 they're like, "What? Our channel has no has like such a small following. How are you interested? It's cozy. It's a it's a real family atmosphere. I don't have that." Yeah, oh, that's 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 good character interaction. That's that's perfect. Um, I feel like there's something else. I don't, I don't, I feel like I'm missing something. Uh... Oh, Vice. I like, okay, but putting aside the dialect issue with, I don't know if that's a sub thing or a Kumara thing. I don't know. We're, we're gonna ignore that. I like what they did with Vice in this movie as like, we're gonna bring him back, but they just go, gone after them. Yeah, good they shit. put a, they put a band aid on it. They didn't heal the wound. Yeah, and it's like, here, it, like, basically a closure that, like, extra closure, you know? Yeah, it, like, we, like, we, f we fixed the really sour ending that Revice had by making it, like, no, he still has his memories. He's, he's gonna, he's gonna remember the show, and he's gonna miss Vice, and if he comes back for another movie, now we have a reason for him to want to get Vice back to fight without having to involve other characters from Revice. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, also, uh, I, I just we barely talked about this because it's barely in the movie. But like the Revice characters getting the ID cores, that was neat. That's a cute little touch. That's a neat. Like it's there's a lot of like little things about this movie that we already knew thanks to like news and leaks and whatnot. That I was like, oh yeah, that that's neat. Okay, there's a lot in this movie. Wow. Yeah, it's it's a it's it might be the most overstuffed toy movie in a bit. Mm -hmm. And that's that's saying something because we're only a few years removed from the last Tyson. Yeah, you, or Senki or whatever they're calling it. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Want to talk about Geats proper with episode thirty-three? Sure. Yeah. Overall, I, we thought the movie was good. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Coming yeah. under Geats episode thirty-three, Yearning One Buffa Unrivaled. Now this episode's got a lot of people talking. So Vac, what did you think? Our boys. They did our boys so dirty. Yep. I'm so upset, our boys. <laughs> yeah, everyone is. Everyone's upset. Everyone's upset that Ben and John got cucked. Everyone's upset. Also, I, I love the, they, they have no other way of knowing this. I literally banged my head into my keyboard. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> I saw you. you I literally saw the images you sit on. The put <laughs> shit on the dock. <laughs> uh, uh, but here's the thing. Story structure wise, this this is a really good episode. This is the best episode of Geats in a minute. Uh, it's just that that one thing that I'm like, oh, you you fucking tease Toei. God yeah. damn it! And Especially said, because the last shot of the episode is the fucking the the rules for the new game of like, if somebody's ID core is destroyed, they can never become a common writer again. So like, I can't even hope for a Toei Tokusatsu fan club special anymore. Damn it. Maybe a prequel. We'll see. Uh, hmm. uh, I think uh, my thing is like I I kind of wish like with this episode it's good story wise and I like all the character developments. I, I understand, but I understand why people are upset because they simplified the writer process with just like it's a helmet and a bodysuit. Mm -hmm. So I'm like you people are like you can't even do a helmet. I understand the frustration there. I think like I kind of wanted more scenes of Buffa going back to other writers that have been destroyed or like retired. Oh yeah, we got like a cameo from Mary. Yeah, or some shit like that. Because I, I feel like groove, the groovy scene was great. I love Ituku, like, actually being in there. But there should have been, like, like, two more of those, though. Yeah, with, like, actual characters we've seen before. You mm -hmm. know? Um, that, that's oh, just a... My. 
like we know he's coming back next week but imagine if that's how notch sparrow had had become a writer again it's just one scene of buffa betraying the fuck out of him yeah just buffa chasing after him like to the ends of the earth or some shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> notch sparrow you can't escape me <laughs> yeah um other than that, I really like this episode. Buffa, I love the cape. I think the cape's cool. Um, yeah, it works. Yeah. And also the fight scene with, like, Jin. Uh, I forgot the other guy's name. The, the, uh, the glare. The, the, the glare 2. Um, what is his his name? I feel like I should remember his name. Fuck it. He's, I, I, it's, it's, it's Fancy Silly Giori. Yeah, Fancy Silly Giori. And, like, that was a really good, well-choreographed fight. But also the dialogue exchanges of just how Buffa and the producer are both being assholes to each other. It's great. <laughs> mm-hmm, like, and also in that scene, uh, th- again, I'm I'm looking forward to this week's Gateway to Geats because Boingo's going to lose it. They're not even hiding the capitalism metaphor in this episode. Yeah, like, that's part of – Glare 2 literally just says, you are not worthy to me anymore or to be on my television show. And it's like – uh, the, 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 man, I love on Subtle Kamen Rider so much. And, and like, fucking Buffa yelling about, like, oh, fuck you guys. All you do is dangle carrots in front of people and perpetuate a terrible cycle that's going to keep them in the gutter. Yeah, exactly. It's like, they're just not being subtle. It's good shit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, I- also, like, uh, just scooting back around real quick, uh, N- Neon got some some nice little scenes here, and, like, when she gets her memory back and, and Kuhn comes up and he's like, are you okay? You should have given me my memories back, motherfucker. I thought you were supposed to be my supporter. Yeah. Uh- uh, and, and like, as, as much as I'm upset about Ben and John's fight scene, massive air quotes there, uh, at least they got to have a full, like, English dialogue scene before that happened. Yeah, or just I'd actually get to help Neon, you know, like they should. It's good shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, this is a good start to the arc. I feel very good about this arc, especially at the end with like Trust Last playing and Geed's coming back. And That's then the, the the big old swerve. Yeah. And maybe Surumi will finally get to do things. Also, by the way, I, this, oh, that's the thing I want to talk about Battle Royale. Surumi yeah. actually got to be a character. Surumi got to be a character. She spends this whole episode going like, "I don't, I don't want to make people writers anymore. This is bad. This is not gonna work." And just being told, "Just do it, bitch. Just do your fucking job." And then she finally gets to a point where she's like so depressed, going like, "Am I, am I really just gonna be a spectator my whole life?" And Buster was probably like, "Yeah, is she?" Yeah. Uh, and, and then she wishes she she believes in fairies hard enough to bring Geats back to life and. Yeah. Uh, we find out that like it's it's not just the game that's a perpetual cycle in the DGP. It's the navigators becoming the goddesses of desire. Yeah. Oh, actually, that gave me some guy. Oh, the, like I'll just. I mean, like, we've talked about Geats giving us guy vibes before, but I think that's the biggest guy red flag we've had. Little bit, yeah. But I I, I trust this writer more than I do Urobuchi. You trust anyone more than Urobuchi. You would trust a serial killer more than Urobuchi. I, tr- I trust Urobuchi about as far as he can piss. That's a very interesting uh, metaphor. Uh, oh, but I'm yeah, actually, it's a small dick. Uh, okay, but it's still a very interesting metaphor. Uh, but like, <laughs> actually, I forgot to think, talk about Serubi and George in Battle Royale because oh, they, yeah. also- they rocked those looks. Yeah. Like, George just looks like every Twitter common writer user, uh, but, like, actually well-dressed. He's just <laughs> like me, for real. Yeah. Um, and, like, all the little catchphrases and sound effects with George, and also just Surubi just being like, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was another weird thing in Battle Royale. When Iki comes back with Vice at the end of the Revice segment, they freaking use the original common writer motorcycle jump sound effect. Yeah, I guess they're just, they were just, like, they already got the sound effects for George, so it's like, uh, let's put it here. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, uh, yeah. It, but like Geats was good this been, week. It's been a fully geated out week. Yeah, Geats and Revice were good this week. <laughs> uh yeah, and I, even though there was a lot to talk about, it was all pretty good. I'm very excited to see what's next. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm really interested, especially in the fact that like they're they're reusing the the this like really interesting week for the movie to get subbed. They're they're using the desire battle royale thing for like something entirely different. Yeah. Also, we got to address this. Episode thirty four got leaked. It's not so. Oh yeah, so- that's right. Uh, some kind of like Japanese website leaked it in fucking four twenty p. Yeah. 
Uh, we don't. We're we're not covering it yet. We're covering it next week, but it did mm-hmm. get leaked. So somebody yeah. somebody posted the raws up on the cat site. So if if you want, you can go watch it unsubbed right now. We're gonna be good boys and wait till next week, though. Yeah. Um. Speaking of good boys and girls, oh, some something, King Oger. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Episode nine. Gira on the run. Fox on the run. You scream and ever. You don't know that song, do you? No, I don't. It was in a Guardians movie. I figured you would. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, th- this this was a really good episode. This, oh yeah. This, this feels like a good like uh, penultimate episode to to the opening arc of like okay you've gotten to know all all the characters now before we bring them together here's a little focus for the side characters. Yeah, and I love that they're side characters because I I think a complaint that a lot of people have been saying about Ryder. And especially in Sentai, it's just there's not like there's not like humans that are just they don't they don't fight in suits, you know. Like, there's no riders. there's no regular ass people like Ryder has, and like this is a thing I even heard people talking about years before we started Twit is Ryder has gotten really far away from like the days of Agito where there were like a bunch of human supporting characters who went and did normal people shit on camera. Well, to be fair, that's kind of been a thing with the whole, uh, like, superhero genre, like, both Western and Eastern. Uh, yeah. As, mu- as much as, like, I mark out for shit, like, S- Super Lois, that's that's lame to do in mainline continuity, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but, like, it, it's great to get, so, it's just great to get a focus on the side characters for that reason. Also, just, they're great characters. They're funny fellas. Yeah, their their interaction was really solid in this, and it helped that like most of them I already knew and liked from their their uh, their big boys focus episode. Yeah, um, and it's like, like you get to learn a bit more about them. Like uh, specifically, uh, oh, I forgot his name, but uh, uh, Tombo's uh, retainer and Sebastian. They it was nice seeing them be flushed out after having gone like, oh, these guys are neat in those episodes. Yeah, I'm looking at the. Uh, Kuroda is Tombo's subordinates. Yeah. And we already know Sebastian. Uh, um, and that being said, there's still, like, some fun moments for the main cast in here. Like, like Gira yeah. gets... Gira's in here being Gira. Uh, there's, there's, a fun, there's a fun little moment where he gets mistaken for somebody by the people who are hunting him. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, there's a lot of Rita screaming in this. Yeah. Uh, they are, again, a mood. Yeah. Um... Uh, but honestly, like, my favorite part of this was just the, the, the whole, like, last, uh, five or ten minutes where it, um, it became, like, a little focus story for, uh, Rita's paralegal, um, because, uh, she says specifically, like, I'm not a retainer, I'm more like a potential successor, and to me, the whole fact that, like, Rita is supposed to be a judge, I'm like, well, the closest term to that in, like, court terminology is you're a paralegal for Rita. Yeah, and it's re- it's really I really like more for more not more for uh, that's their name, and uh. she she's great. Um, I, I really I really already liked her from Rita's episode, but it's nice to see her get a bit more fleshed out. And then like the freaking end, like you got all this fun stuff at the end, and then you also get the establishment of a love triangle between all the mechs. Uh, the, oh, yeah, them mechs are fucking. Yeah, that they're, they're they're having a whole Don Brothers over there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> that needs to be a term that gets used whenever there's a, there's a love triangle in Sentai now. They're having a whole Don Brothers over there. Yeah, or like a Jetman. Um, yeah. yeah, that's uh, probably more appropriate, honestly. They're having a whole yeah. Jetman over there. Yeah, they're having a whole Jetman over there. And then, like, after you get the big mecha fight, like, Gira just comes back and then everyone is, like, murked. Because mm-hmm. Rastal's like, I've done the thing. You're gonna get fricked, mate. Yeah. Uh, also, it it, 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 took, it took me an embarrassingly long time to realize that the big general monster mash was an earthworm. I didn't even realize that until now. Uh, yeah, that's what he was doing. His tendrils were worms shooting down into the earth, and he he was m- mixing up the soil. Yeah. But yeah, it's gonna be very exciting to see how this all concludes with like a flashy fight next episode. Yeah, the big, the big, like, okay, we're not gonna fuck each other over explicitly for a while. We're gonna be a team episode, is what I think next week will be. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure they're still gonna freak each other over. Yeah, but it's probably gonna be more subtle, and it's probably just all gonna be like, no, I want to kill Reculees. No, I want to kill Reculees. Except for Tombo. Tombo's still playing all sides, from what we know. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I, th- I think a Tombo is probably going to be the, mo- the Kiji of the season, where it's like he is a good guy, but he's done a lot of weird things, you know? Are you talking about uh, Hachi? Uh, Dabowski? Yeah, Dabowski. Mr. Dabowski. Yeah, Mr. Dabowski, my favorite uh, for period math saying, teacher. Oh, I kept I kept confusing Tombo with Hachi. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but it's all good. Yeah. Um. Now let's talk about the special. Oh God, this could be this the work. nine minute YouTube special with fucking blood in it. Toei, what are you doing? You you put blood in this? That goes against YouTube standards. Well, anyway, Osama Sentai King Ojer, the secrets of King Reculees, episode one. Not gonna lie, mate, this is the worst thing we've covered this week. Yeah, but I still thought it was alright. Oh yeah, it's a good, there's good stuff in it, it's just, I think I'm starting to see why people are saying King Ojo's giving them motion sickness. Yeah, they do some weird editing compositing shit in this to try and yeah. be artsy. And um, it's not great, not great, Also, mate. there was literally a shot where, I don't remember her name at all, but scientist lady, like, you, you could see, like, her hair was partially keyed out. I mean, that, that, the keying doesn't bog me, it's just, but, like, there's some good, good stories here. There's oh, good... I completely forgot. Uh, I noticed, do you know that one little bit where they cut away to uh, Happy Spa with Hiromi and the kids? Yeah. In uh, Juga vs. Ultica? Uh-huh. I think they were all CGI or all green screened onto an, a still image of Happy Spa. Like I could see aliasing around all of them, and I mean, that tells set. me that tells me either they don't have that location anymore, or they couldn't schedule all those actors on the same day. Or the set. I think it's a set thing. Just they already destroyed the set, and it was like, "Wait, we need to fill the grass." Okay, fine. <laughs> Probably. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, Reculus was fine. Uh, I I feel like I feel like the secrets of King Reculees re- that title I feel like that refers to there being something previously between him and Scientist Lady because like there's a whole lot of like oh we have a deal and you're you're gonna die at the end of this for the good of the kingdom and you're gonna unlock all this shit for me and like there's a few like vague lines and also she turns into a monster mash yeah I think they're like childhood friends. Or potentially, she's his and Gira's sister. I could see that, but right now, like we're we're focused on oh that guy. Like I really like Reculees' like honor. I can't wait to see how that honor gets destroyed later. Yeah, he, it was weird seeing him not be a total bastard for once. Yeah, because at the end of this, he he calls up Rita saying, "Judge me because I killed someone." So it's like, oh, mm-hmm. that's interesting. I also love that Rita picks up the phone in the most like what do you want way possible for them. Yeah, it's it's very it's very funny. Uh, but yeah, I am very interested to see how this goes. Uh, it, I hope the action scenes are better because I I, did, I think I actually felt a bit sick watching the uh, this action scene. It, it might be again I, like I could see that, but it did not happen for me. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe you just have a bigger stomach <laughs> or better stomach. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I was just too conked out from Movie Battle Royal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I watched this. This was like the first thing I watched mm-hmm. this week. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. Like, it yeah, was a see, good week for- see I watched this like literally five minutes before I got on call. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I watched this first and the worst, but like I got a bunch of other cool shit this week. So yeah, yeah. This, is, this, is a, this is a fucking big week, but it was a solid week for new releases across the board. Yeah, uh, I need to get something to drink, so please talk about Mega Ranger while I go do that. Okay, uh, sucks that you have to do that, though, because I actually have things to say about Mega Ranger this week. Um, I watched Mega Ranger episodes 37 through 43, and I also watched the uh, the Car Ranger vs. movie. Um, and the Car Ranger vs. movie is alright. I get the feeling I would enjoy it a whole heck of a lot more if I had seen more than, like, the first couple episodes of Car Ranger, because I, I tried watching it years ago and I couldn't get into it. Uh, I, I do want to circle back around and watch the rest of it at some point, though. Um, but it's, it's just kind of like a fun romp that has, like, a bunch of goofy gags and goofs, and uh, then there's, like, a nice, a nice cozy high school memory-related thing at the end, and it's fine. Uh, but, however, these episodes of Mega Ranger... Oh boy, did I get lucky, because I got to watch the entire Nezzy Ranger arc in over the course of one chunk of Mega Ranger episodes for this podcast. And the Nezzy Ranger episode arc, it's fucking great. Like, it is the best thing to happen in Mega Ranger so far, because it's, like, 
I I know it should be I should be saying the reverse of this, but it's it's literally the same like beat for beat plot structure of the Psycho Ranger arc from In Space, but there's a lot of like little details in this version that like make it so much better. Like a lot of a lot of like subtle things about the Psycho Ranger arc that's like that's weird. Why did they do that? It makes perfect sense in Mega Ranger because it was a Japanese cultural thing. Uh, like. There's a moment in uh, Silence is Golden from In Space, which is also just a, a, a whole ass episode that they pretty much completely translated to In Space from Mega Ranger. And in, in the In Space episode, there's a moment where uh, um, In Space Pink uh, Cassie bumps into a guy on the street and you, the whole episode is it's a silence episode. She's not allowed to talk because the, the Psycho Rangers can track her through her voice. And she bumps into a guy and he gets really mad at her like, hey, you bumped into me. You need to say you're sorry. And he just kind of seems like a crazy asshole in the Power Rangers version. But in Sentai, it's, oh, this is Japan, the country, the country of ultra formal politeness. It makes sense that somebody would flip out about you bumping into them and you not saying sorry about it. Um, and there's a lot of stuff like that uh, throughout throughout the Nezi Ranger arc. And it was just is overall really good. And the fact that it leads up to this season's Christmas episode and the Christmas episode is the finale of this big arc that's been really good. Uh, yeah, this might have broke my top 10 Christmas episodes, honestly. It was really good. Damn. Yeah, so glad you're having fun with the Nezzy Ranger stuff. Um, mm -hmm. uh, did you talk about versus Car Ranger? Uh, yeah, it was fine. Uh, okay. I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more if I had seen Car Ranger. That's fair. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you haven't. You're almost done with Mega Ranger. So I'm very excited to mm -hmm. see what you're watching next. Oh, you know what I'm watching next, but they don't, and, I, and we're not going to say until yeah. I finish Mega Ranger. Gotcha. Um, I actually forgot what you're what you're going to watch next. So <laughs> <laughs> I told you last night. Whatever. Uh, Ultraman Taiga, I watched that. Now I'm new generation complete of Ultraman. And, hey, um, look at you, achievement unlocked. Yeah, um, and I really like this show. Apparently not a lot of people do, but this is a really good show, uh, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Uh, I like, uh, the dynamic between the Tri-Squad, because the cool thing about Taiga is, um, they take the classic base form, strong form, and speed form that every Ultraman starts with, and they just make them their own characters. Like, that's great. I like that. That's a good twist on the formula. Like, you got the speedy ninja Fuma, you got the buff Titus, and then you got, like, Taiga, who's, like, the son of Taro. And, like, it just, the, their dynamic's great. And I think one of the biggest things that the show does is torture its characters. Oh, boy. Like, this show is sadistic with some of the ways it, like, make challenges its characters. Like, it, it uh, honestly kind of shocked me at times. Uh, like, I'm just like, you really said that? Like, Tregear is a great villain. One of the best Ultra villains, definitely. Mm. Um, oh, wait, also, Tregear is from this? Yeah, Treg. Okay, I, so I only know him from uh, not Destin Crossroads, but the Ultra Galaxy fight before that. He, he yeah. has a little arc in that. Okay, Tregear started in the Rube movie. He made his early bird cameo there. Mm. And then he... Give me a second. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but he yes, started in the Rube movie. Then he then he's the main villain of the Taiga series and movie, and then he's just kind of been a side character in Crossroads. Yeah, uh, he had like a whole little subplot in. Oh, why can't I remember the name of it? But the the galaxy fight before Crossroads, where uh, like cons absolute conspiracy. Yeah, him and Bebiel had like a little uh, fuck boys friendship arc in that, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, I mean Belial does appear, but it's like a clone of Belial. That that's mm. just the excuse for Ultraman Zero to appear, which I, I don't mind. I like Ultraman Zero, so it was a fun yeah. episode. Um, I also like how this series has a metaphor for immigration in Japan. I think what? that's really interesting. Yeah, um, the, the, like, you know how, like, Decker wasn't subtle with its COVID metaphor? This ain't subtle with its immigration metaphor. Like, it's, oh. like, acceptance and tolerance. I, I need to, like, research more into, like, that, maybe they like, Maybe they should do some retread of this for Blazer, then, because I've, I've heard from f uh, friends who are technically foreigners but live in Japan that there's been, uh... There's been some shit stirring up over there since it opened back up. I see. Yeah, and yeah, it, it's really interesting, like how the, they use the aliens, of course, but like it still like preaches an acceptance of tolerance of like this is the this we're trying to make things better, and it's like some people are gonna make things worse, but like some people are gonna like actually strive for better. But like again, it's it, I need to do more research into it, but like I think it was mostly handled well. Uh, nice. Uh, like um. 
Oh yeah, but I really enjoy Taiga. Um, I, it's not my favorite Ultra, but it's a really fun, and I really like the characters, and I'm very excited to watch the movie later. Uh, yeah, because the movie is basically New Generation Climax. It has Ginga, Victory, X, Orb, Geed, Russell, Blue, and Taiga. So it's like like it's like the face actors. Yeah, the face actors. They show up. Oh wow, that's cool. They get, they get to do all big. Let's it's all like, henchmen. It's, it's like the Ultraman version of uh, Mega Max then. Yeah, basically. Even better than Mega Max, because they got even more actors than Mega Max. Oh fuck, that reminds me. I need to I need to I need to watch Forza so I can finally watch Mega Max, because he's the only guy that's in that movie that I still haven't seen his show. Yeah, Forza's good. Mm. And yeah, so I'm new gen complete. Uh, I still kinda wanna continue the Ultraman train, but I don't know what series I'm gonna watch next, so we'll see. Um but yeah, it feels great to been watching all these new gen shows, and I, I like Ultraman a lot. It's very cool. Yeah, uh, show our Ultraman uh, mega mega analysis when eventually. Grab <laughs> 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 up the show a common writer first, which you can find at the Buster Corp YouTube channel. Yeah, where it's, it's hey, plugging. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, tell the people where they can find you. Yeah, uh, I've been doing. Uh, speaking of new gen Ultra, I just did videos on X and Orb. And I think they're some of my best videos, despite being so short, so go check those out. Uh, I'll have more videos, both Ultra and other Toku and just whatever I feel like on there. And you can find some Stream of Consciousness on Twitter at BusterBully3. Um, yeah, and I'm I back. I make, I make videos. I'm back. I'm on the attack, Jack. So go get in my pack and, and watch it through your sack at YouTube.com, at the TheVacHumanator. I'm also on Twitter, at the TheVacHumanator. I'm also on Tumblr, TheVacHumanator.tumblr.com. I'm also on TikTok and Instagram, at the underscore VacHumanator. But folks, that's it. That's this week in Tokusatsu. We did it. It's over. Go home. Read a book. We'll see you next week for whatever happens that week in Tokusatsu.